Today's conversation is sponsored by First Generation Capital Partners. If you're an accredited investor and you want to know about how we're helping other accredited investors keep more of their income, go to firstgencp.com forward slash going long. I do think that if you are a long distance owner, it is important to go to the site every so often or go to the property every so often. But the good news is that there are people that are looking for investors that don't have to live in that same location. You're listening to the Going Long Podcast with Billy Keels, the number one podcast for long distance real asset investing. Welcome to the Going Long Podcast. We're back once again to continue to help to educate you so you feel much more comfortable as well as confident investing beyond your backyard. And yes, I'm your host, Billy Keels, and we are back for another amazing, amazing conversation. Today's guest, you're really, really going to take away lots of copious notes and be able to take lots of action really quickly. Also, for those of you who continue to leave your honest written reviews as well as ratings, thank you so much. It keeps the podcast in the top 1.5% of podcasts globally. And also thank you for screen sharing and capturing and tagging us across LinkedIn and Instagram. That's always awesome. And for those of you who want to be able to hear all the previous episodes, go to firstgencp.com forward slash podcast. You can find every single thing there. Once again, firstgencp.com forward slash podcast, and you can check it out. Well, listen, for those of you who have um, spent like over two decades in the military working in engineering, or you really wanted to understand what it was like to sit at the dinner table of someone who grew up around real estate investing, like today's guest has all of that. And he even has a global world perspective because he's lived in multiple countries while he was serving the country in the military uh, and also uh, working in different oil and gas projects. So this is gonna be really, really awesome. I'm sure you're gonna love today's conversation uh, with the owner of Capitano Investing Group, Mr. Marshall Sykes. And we're gonna get to that just after this. Are you a busy high paid professional, someone who's made $200,000 the previous two years and also expected to earn $200,000 this year? Or maybe as a couple you filed jointly and you've earned $300,000 the previous two years and also expected to earn $300,000 together this year. Or maybe yourself or as a couple, you have a million dollars in net worth, not including your home. Well, if you meet any of those criteria, then the IRS considers you to be someone who is an accredited investor. And so that probably means you're a top producing software sales executive, or maybe you're a highly paid consultant. Maybe you're a lawyer, maybe you're a doctor or, or a business owner. You may even work for a professional sports franchise. Well, one way or the other, you've done a lot of really hard work to get to where you are. You've done 100% of the work, and nowadays you're continuing to get crushed by taxes. And that means you're only bringing home 50% of the reward. If you're tired of doing this over and over, and you're looking for a solution to start to keep more of your money, you can go to firstgencp.com forward slash invest so that you can start to keep more of your money, which means that you can start to have the freedom to choose what you want to do, when you want to do it, with whom you want to do it. So once again, go to firstgencp.com forward slash invest to see how we can start to help you today. Once again, that's firstgencp.com forward slash invest. So you know what? If you're looking for a boost to be able to captain your wealth, to accelerate your long distance investing success, then guess what? Today's a conversation you're gonna wanna listen to until the very last word, I promise. You know why? Because today's guest, today's special guest, had the amazing good fortune of growing up in a family that was able to talk about real estate investing and development at the family table. He has various degrees from uh, North Carolina State University as well as the University of Texas. I really wanna hear more about that. He's also a licensed professional engineer with three decades, although when you see him, you wouldn't even believe that that was possible, uh, of project as well as asset management experience. He's got over 24 years of serving his country in the Naval Civil Engineering Corps, and we thank him for his service there. And you know what? He even serves as the COO of two engineering in, in two engineering commands in multiple countries, which that I really, really like that uh, with different operations teams and doing that up to like $2 billion. I want to hear more about that. It gives me great pleasure to welcome to today's conversation, the owner of Capitano Investing Group, Mr. Marshall Sykes. Marshall, welcome to the show, man. Hey, Billy. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. Hey, you know what? This is a long time coming, man, because we like connected over LinkedIn and then we were chatting and all this other kind of good stuff. And I was like, we got to get this guy on the show and have him share his story. So I'm really, really excited that uh, that you decided to join us today. Marshall, I want the Going Long family to get to know you as quickly as possible. So you know how this goes. I'm going to ask you two questions in the beginning. I'm going to ask you three at the end. And in the middle, 
I'm going to ask you some questions. I just don't know what those are yet. So let's see. Help us understand. Where is it that you call home uh, in the U.S.? So, you know, I've lived in a lot of places all over the world. Yeah. But right now I'm calling home Pinehurst, North Carolina, which is a big golfing resort in North Carolina. We're actually having the U.S. Open here in, next year uh, in the summer of 2024. But also, uh, I grew up here. Actually, my dad was my dad would retired army near Fort. We live near Fort Bragg. It's kind of in the middle of the state, close to Raleigh, close to Charlotte, close to Greensboro. Some good markets for multifamily investments. All right, fantastic. So you got a chance to head back home, and uh, Pinehurst is where you call home today. Which really, really appreciate that. And the other thing is this positivity stuff because I really, really love positivity. I think it helps to give a boost uh, in our energy and uh, help us keep focused on the right stuff. So help us understand what's the most positive thing that's happened to or for you in the last twenty four hours. Yeah, I tell you that. Normally, I have coffee with my wife every morning. You know, usually I'll, I'll get up. I lived in Italy for a while. I didn't yeah. drink coffee before I went to Italy. I was in the service there and started really enjoying espresso and cappuccinos. So I kind of crafted that as I got back to the States. I started buying, you know, cappuccino machines and I kept upgrading as I went along. But so every morning I make my wife and I a cappuccino and we sit down and talk for an hour. So you know, sometimes we're playing a game on our phone or whatever, but, you know, we're there and sharing time together as we start the day. I love that. To be able to get that quality time first thing in the morning and bring in that European uh, kind of the, specifically the Italian uh, love of coffee and being able to get that in the cappuccino for the first hour of the morning. Absolutely love that. Appreciate you sharing that with us. And let's get into getting to know you even more, Marshall. So as you know, I'm a recovering perfectionist. I well, I think you've kind of probably heard that because most people know that about me. I try to do really ridiculous things like try to tell your entire backstory in four seconds or two and a half seconds or whatever it was. Impossible. You've done so many things. You lived in so many different places. What I would love for you to do, Marshall, please is share your backstory in your own words. Take the time that you need. You don't have to try to do it like I was doing it in a couple seconds. And also, if you could help us understand some of the major decisions that you've made to get to this point in your journey, and then we'll see where you and I take the conversation from there. Yeah. So my story is a little bit different for a lot of real estate investors, it seems. I uh, actually grew up in a real estate investment family. My dad had retired army and he wanted to work for himself. So he learned the building trade. And him and my mom actually were builders and they would build two homes at a time normally. And they would keep one as a rental and sell one to live off of, basically. And so sometimes that was challenging because I had seven brothers and sisters. So it was a big family. We all would work in the summertime with them on building the houses. So I learned learned uh, building at, at that at a young age and when I was a teenager. And I thought I'd never do that again. I'd never do this lifestyle. <laughs> so I went to NC State, got my engineering degree, and then I joined the Navy as a, guess what? My engineering degree is in materials engineering. Well, I couldn't find a job in that. So I joined the Navy as a civil engineer mm -hmm. doing construction management. So I was back into construction. I think God had a plan for me, and that's what it was. And so I, I thought I'd go in for four years and then get out. But no, I loved it, actually. I loved being in the Navy. I loved doing the construction, being in the projects, as well as in the engineering design offices. Um, so fast forward 10 years, I'm still in the Navy. And I started thinking, well, it's time for me to have some passive income when I retire, not just the military income, if I retire as a military, but I want to have some passive income like my parents did and do, I guess. And um, and so I started thinking that my wife and I talked about a plan. She stopped working because it was hard for her when we moved around so much every couple of years. And it's hard for her to maintain a job anyway. So she started focusing on the real estate. We built up a portfolio of around 10 houses. And so had, we had some passive income coming in. I would say it was more of a break even at that point. Mm -hmm. But uh, we looked for the future when we had them paid off. We would have passive income when we were retiring. Um, so that's kind of how I, you know, I got started in real estate. And I guess some of the decisions, one of the things is that um, every, you know, I, I stayed in the military for 25 years 
and had a decision to make. Do I go into real estate full time or do I do it still part time? And always, it was always a struggle for me. But um, so I'll get into more of that as we uh, go into this conversation a little bit deeper. All right. No, that sounds that sounds fantastic. I really appreciate you also starting out, just helping us understand that so many people move towards real estate. You had the very unique opportunity to really start learning about uh, real estate from the very beginning, right? Watching your parents build two houses at a time, living in one side and moving on the other. Some, I guess, would even call that like somewhat house hacking. You're developing and house hacking at the same time, which I think is absolutely fantastic. But And you recognize that that benefit, that unique uh, insight. Maybe if you could t- tell us, because sometimes people, they don't hear what those dinner conversations are about. And I think there's so much learning that happens at the dinner table, like not maybe not formal learning, but learning that really helps and molds your worldview. Can you maybe give us some insight into kind of some of the things that you were learning at the dinner table with those other brothers and sisters while your parents were talking about what they were doing uh, with real estate? Yeah. So, yeah, we had a big family, 10 people at the dinner table. So we always, we had a round table, it was, was, which was kind of neat, really, and really enjoyed that. Uh, we don't have that any longer, but it was a pretty fun table. Um, but w- not only the conversations at the dinner table, but as you're sitting there watching TV in the living room, you're here. I'm hearing my parents talk about the business side of real estate. So what do they have to be prepared? The numbers, they had to prepare the numbers, prepare materials for the future. My, so I heard those conversations and, the, you know, I, I kind of put them in the back of my mind and really think about it too much. But those are the kind of things that you realize that entrepreneurs are always thinking about their business. They have they have to think ahead. They have to um, have time to do the administrative piece as well as do the physical piece on the job site which was how my parents were doing it. But uh, not only that, just on the job site, we would learn how, how to put the tools away every night. It was, there was an organized way of doing that. There's an organized way of kind of just living life that makes it easier the next day. So that those are the kind of things I remember as a child. Well, I think that's fantastic, right? So you're you're absorbing this kind of by osmosis, but at the same time, you're recognizing that there's a certain pattern to being able to do things, and and from that, you and I'm in, I'm going to extrapolate it here. You didn't actually say this, but it, there's efficiencies that could be drawn from certain types of organization and being able to repeat and and have a way of uh, pulling things out, putting them back, um, w- which I think is fantastic. And so I want to kind of juxtapose that. Right, because there's the organization and the process and the things that you saw at the dinner table. I want to first of all thank you for your service as well, um, because that is something that uh, I just would, like would like to do on behalf of the Going Long family. Thank you very much for the service uh, to our My country. My pleasure. Um, and also, on the opposite side of that organization structure, you've had this very unique opportunity to live in multiple different countries, right? Places like in the Middle East, in the UAE, or Iraq, or uh, Canada, and, and different places. Also like Italy, you even started talking about a cappuccino. These different places and different inputs is kind of like at the opposite end of the organization that you that you had. So maybe talk to us what it was about or how living in different countries has also helped to shape your worldview or the way that you are going about educating and or assisting uh, others today. Yeah, you know, as Americans, we kind of get isolated with the rest of the world, unless you do a lot of traveling, right? Mm -hmm. But one of my first uh, deployments in the Navy was actually to, well, I went, I went, I was in Guam for a little bit. So I saw how that an island country in the Pacific uh, lives or, you know, operates. And then also the next time I went to Scotland and uh, Scotland is a Western country, as, as you know, in the Western world. And it's, but it's nothing like the United States. It is, you could. You, it was a very cold. Okay, um, and be, even though it's cold, you can only have the heat on two hours a day. You know, two hours in the morning. I'm sorry, two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. That's just how they operate. So their energy is conserved. But also the convenience of the United States. Scotland really doesn't have that. And then I went to Italy, and Italy was similarly. I didn't have to have the heat as much. But because um, I was in Sicily, way down in the med, yeah. but um, the 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 convenience of the United States, it's, it's very hard to beat the convenience of the United States. So you learn that there's other ways to operate. There's uh, struggle. People have struggles. 
that maybe some Americans don't really see that the rest of the world has. And then I, you know, I worked for four months in Nigeria. That was a, that's definitely an eye opener. This, you know, thirty, I don't know, 25, 30 million people in a city. It's uh, it's an amazing place that, that operates. I don't know how they operate with that many people, but uh, they get by somehow. And I had an opportunity to work in the Middle East as well, which was uh, a good way, a different a different way. Their high, their standard of living is is high, very high, especially in Dubai where I was living, uh, and I worked most of the time in Iraq. Uh, a little, a very big contrast between those two countries, even. Mm. But um, anyway, so all those things have really helped me understand what it's how good the United States really is and how much there is to celebrate in the United States and how much we other countries do rely on us um, to help them and to motivate them and, and, and really help them to be the best that they can be as a country. Well, and you know, and so being able to have these different perspectives and worldviews and, and understanding and probably challenging the way that I'm from Columbus, Ohio, so I used I used to think that the world worked always in the same way that things worked in Columbus, Ohio. And then since then, I've traveled in uh, to 86 different countries. I've lived in Europe for the last 22 years, and so very similar to you, it's helped to 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 form the worldview that I have. So one of the things that you focus a lot on, um, because you have these efficiencies, and you, and you and you also are able to understand and explore the different ways of uh, getting to a goal. Right. I want to bring this a little bit back to real assets. Right. And, and one of the things that I, I really appreciate about what you've done is you've worked in an industry like oil and gas, which is something that I really, really like. Um, and also another type of real asset, which is which is real estate. And you've been able to do that regardless of the borders, right? Because you are you are the epitome of someone who is long distance investing. You're investing in different places regardless of where you live. Can you talk to us about? how you came to to recognize that it's okay to number one invest in a place where you don't actually live and kind of help that person who may be struggling a little bit today to get their head around the concept of hang on a second i can actually invest in something that's not that i don't have to walk down the street and touch or or see yeah i mean i that's uh in today's day and world i mean with with the online information that we have it's easy to invest at long distance, but you got to have the structure in place, right? The, the, who you're investing with, or you have to have a team. If you're the owner, you have to have a team there that that is operating locally. Um, I do think that if you know if, if you are a long distance owner, it is important to go to the site every so often, or go to the project to the property every so often, but. The good news is that there are people that are looking for investors that don't have to live in that same location to, to so you can invest anywhere where the prop where the numbers make sense for the investment, right? So that's what you're really looking for. It's not that you're wanting to go see your asset down the street. If it's not a good location, if it's not a good market, you want to go where the good markets are. And so I love the fact that, yeah, right. You're leveraging technology. There's an opportunity to invest in teams, something that is extremely important for that person. Who's did you use a couple of words? Like you want to invest in a, in a, in a good location or you or a market. Uh, I tend to call it a location. That's why, um, <laughs> but help that person that's trying to figure out how do I know if this is the right team? How do I know Marshall that this is the right location for me? T talk to that person, how they can, how you can help them figure that out. I think I think it is important to look at the team, the particularly the ones that are going to man the managing members of the team, mm -hmm. and how do they have experience? Do they have experience in that market, in the property, the type of property? Um, are they trustworthy to to go the extra mile if things when things go start getting difficult with the property? Because that usually happens in real estate at some point. Um, the, but as far as markets are concerned. I like markets that are increasing in population, increasing in job growth, and their rent growths are increasing. So those are the big three that I look for. But also, it is the property in a location that's landlord friendly? Is it, do they have landlord friendly laws in that city or that state that help uh, investors? Um, th those type of things I look for in a market. 
trusting that you're enjoying today's conversation. And you know what? If you're tired of getting crushed by taxes and you're looking for greater freedom to be able to choose what you want to do when you want to do it, make sure that you go to firstgencp.com forward slash going long and see how we can help you today. Let's get back to the conversation. I'm going to ask you just to dig a little bit deeper into that last one because I think that one's really important. When, when someone's trying to figure out if it's landlord friendly or not, um, what does that mean and how can they find out? You know, I think uh, for me, it means that um, they, the, the state or the city is, are going to allow rents to increase as the market dictates. Sometimes you have rent controls where the costs are going up, the expenses are going up, but the landlord can't increase the rent to pay those expenses. So then, it, then the tr- then the property starts getting into trouble, and and there's not a lot of pro- there's not profit for the investors. Yeah, and this was so. There's two things I, I really want the going long family to hear what you just said. Number one, it, it is starting out as you said for me. What does that mean? And so each one of you are going to come up with your own decision making criteria, and. Marshall, appreciate you using that very specific example, because when you are doing this to also help to generate a profit or a return for investors, when there is something that could potentially restrict that, then that's one of the things that you have to take into consideration, right? As as the, as the lead investor, as someone who's even potentially going to be investing in a project. So these are like Marshall's helping you understand or to be able to ask really, really key questions like, Hey, listen, what kind of state is this? What kind of uh what kind of locality is this? Is this something that tends to be much more landlord friendly or uh something that is a bit more investor friendly? And just a question to ask. And he's helping you to uh to, to be able to do that. So was there something you wanted to add on to that, Marshall? Yeah, I guess for example, on that one, the state of Georgia is usually considered a very landlord friendly state. Mm-hmm. But Savannah is not a landlord friendly city. So you can't can't just look at the state, you got to look at the locale as well. Excellent. Really 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 appreciate you dra- dr- really drilling down into that because it is it's about the location, location, location and actually where is the the property located. So um it's, so I know that you're also helping uh, lots of uh, of uh, of investors who are wanting to get involved that are looking to be passive investors. Talk to that person who's really looking to get started. Like they know that the the Wall Street game is kind of like they've been playing it for a while, but they don't seem to be getting ahead. <laughs> and they've now started realizing that real assets are something that can actually touch, feel, have much more control over, but they're just looking to really up their game. What do you say to that person that's really looking to 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 get started and being more, and whether it's active or passive investor? What, what do you say to that person? Well, first of all, I think uh, having a W-2 job is a great thing. Um, and, and especially if you really love your job or love your industry that you're in. And I did that when I was in the Navy. I loved it. Uh, and, at, and at ExxonMobil. The, I would say that I, at, I'll give you a story. So night, in about 1990 time frame, I had $25,000 and I wanted to put it in the stock market. So I went to... Um, person that my brother knew, we put, I put it in the stock market. Fast forward about 10 years, it's worth about $25,000. I'm like, that's not really the certainty that I was looking for in the stock market. And everybody talks about the 6 or 8% growth per year or whatever it is for the stock market. It just didn't, it didn't happen. It didn't materialize. And so that kind of was an eye opener for me about the stock market. There's a lot of uncertainty in it. The things that world events can change the U.S. stock market um, on a dime, and it's just amazing how fast they can change can change things. So I started looking for more certainty, and that's what drove me. That was one of the drivers for me to go back to to buying single family real estate um, as a rentals, and so. Then I started thinking, okay, so what can I do as a, then I started hearing about syndications. I had always wanted to do multifamily. I even built a fourplex with my mom and dad growing up, which Mm -hmm. my mom still owns today. Um, So I see the value of that. And I always wanted to do that. I was building big barracks in Camp Pendleton 
back in the, around the 2008, 2009 timeframe. And we built over 10,000 units there. And it's very similar to multifamily development. So I always, and, and, and in California, it was starting to pick up with multifamily out in town. And I always was intrigued by it, but I didn't think I could do it. So then I started to learn about syndications once I was at Exxon, about 2017, 18 timeframe, I learned about syndications where you individuals can pull their money together and buy an apartment building. And as an, I started out that way, as a limited partner, I basically I was an, I was an investor. I just provided cash. The other people operated the, the, the property. But as a limited partner, I was able to invest and learn about multifamily. And I think you can do that for other syndication, other properties as well. Syndication can be used for self-storage or other types of uh, real assets as well. So I think for someone who's looking to get into this, I think as a being a passive investor as a limited partner is a great thing because you can learn it and you can you can understand the terminology and you let other people do the work while you still enjoy your job. Yeah. So, and, and there is, uh, you know, I spent 26 years working in the corporate world and I think there are so many positive things that came as a result of that. I knew that I didn't want to stay there forever, so I didn't, but um, I, I agree with you. There are so many positive things that you can, that you can gain from a W2 at the same time, when you look at a 10 year span and you have the same amount of money in mm-hmm. the stock market as you did 10 years previous. Well, and, and, and just, you didn't say it, but I'm going to say it in kind of a, probably a, a, maybe not a nice way, but I mean, you basically just lost a lot of money because every year the cost of living increases and whether they manipulate that one way or the other, that's a whole different topic. So we won't get into that, but 10,000 or the $25,000, 10 years later is worth a lot less. It buys, it buys a whole lot less. So, um, I appreciate you sharing that with us, Marshall, just gives us some perspective. Um, but, but one of the things that I do want us to be able to do is jump into the going long final three. And the thing is, Marshall, I never ask any of our special guest. And today you're our special guest to go along final three, unless you tell me that you're ready. Are you ready? I am absolutely ready. You are absolutely born ready. I knew you were going to say yes to this. It gave me, I was absolutely not worried at all. And because you are a world traveler, this is going to be super easy for you. <laughs> so with we started with you over in Pinehurst. I want to bring things back over to this side of the pond, even though I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio. I've been living over here in Europe for the last 22 years. I would love for you to share with us, what is your favorite European city that you've either visited or is still on your bucket list to visit? Yeah, I have uh, visited quite a number of European cities, but uh, I would say the one I really enjoyed the most was at the the Amalfi Coast in Italy, which is Positano. I really like that, and Sorrento. So those are right there together. But uh, if you were going to stay there for a long term, I would say Sorrento because it has a little bit bigger city, a little bit more offerings there. All right. Sorrento is a fantastic place uh, as well. So appreciate that. And I want to get into the next question because this is, you've got a lot of, um, you know, this is, you and I have both been very fortunate. We've been surrounded by a lot of really, really successful people. Uh, And one of the things that I've recognized from people that are extremely successful, Marshall, as you will know, um, you've helped people, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people around the globe, um, either in your corporate role or now in your new, uh, in your new venture, not your new venture, but your venture uh, with Capitano Investing Group. And one of the things I've recognized is that typically every single time successful people do something, they touch something, they want to put a new project in place, they get everything right the first time, which allows them to go even faster and better than most, I think, you're kind of looking at me like, Billy, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Of course, it's a joke, Marshall. I'm just joking. Nobody gets things right, especially really successful people. They don't get it right every single time. The reality is they make a lot more mistakes than most people, probably 20 to 50 times more mistakes, but they're always trying new things. But that was a joke. This is not. Every single time really successful people make a mistake or have a learning opportunity, every single time they stop they learn from the mistake. And then what they do afterwards is just brilliant. They put different strategies, tactics, and actions in place to minimize the probability of that exact same thing happening. So I'd love for you to share with us, what is the one lesson that you know that the going long family needs to learn or hear from you today to minimize the probability of some major catastrophe happening for them? What would you share with us? Well, I think uh, one of the things uh, I get go back to my real estate um, mistakes, I, you know, that, um, shared a little bit of the driver to get me back into real estate because the stock market just really wasn't producing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
So I started investing in single family homes around 1998, 99, and had one previous to that, but that was a smaller one. But uh, started really investing in 1999, built up my portfolio. And about 2008, 2009, there was a lot of, you know, the single family home market, the real estate market kind of crashed. Uh, it wasn't so bad where my properties were, but all the same, it slowed down. And I, at that point, I was also, I had two young ch- children. I had a very demanding job. I had just made 06 in the Navy and I was a, basically in charge of 800 people. And, you know, I started focusing on my job and my career mm-hmm. a lot. I mean, I just didn't have time to focus on real estate as much. And so I slowed down. And I really thought I'd just slow down for a few years until I got out of the Navy. And then I started working at Exxon and started traveling all over the world doing projects. And so it kind of snowballed until almost 10 years later. Then I started investing back in the syndications, multifamily syndications. Um, but so it, I slowed down for 10 years. I think that was a mistake. I think um, it's a good idea to to take an assessment of things, maybe take a year off, but it's also important to always keep investing. Mm. And there's so many different ways you can invest nowadays that there's no excuse not to invest in my mm. opinion. You can, you can do single family homes, you can do Airbnbs, you can do, um, which is short term rentals, or you can do multifamily syndications yep. or self storage. There's just so many opportunities out there to invest in real estate. Yeah, just make sure you don't get off of the uh, get off the bus. Stay on the bus and don't uh, don't take that ten year hiatus. Is what it sounds like to me. Make sure that you're staying in the game. I appreciate you sharing that. And then, Marshall, one last thing before we hit the road, help us with just one book that you'd like to recommend to the Going Long family today. Well, you know, I've had a lot of different um, shifts in my career. Um, I retired from the Navy in 2012. I worked for Exxon for eight years and then started doing real estate full time. So I always go back to this book called by Bob Buford called Halftime. Mm, yeah. um, I read that when I was coming out of the Navy. I read it again after I left Exxon. It's like it's it kind of gives you an idea to reset. It's an opportunity to reset. Like it's based on a, a football or basketball team going into halftime and rethinking how they played the first half and what they want to do different in the second half. And so that's why I always go back to that. And I guess for me, it's more of like a hockey team that has three different periods, (laughs) two half times. Um, But it's just something that helps me reset and think about my life isn't about success, but it's about significance. Yes, I want success. I want to be successful, but it's really about significance. I want to live a life of significance. Love that. Absolutely love that. Buf- Mr. Buford, half time and being able to live uh, for significance. And listen, this is like, it's one of the things like, I can't believe these conversations go by so quickly. Uh, Marshall, I feel like we just got started and, and you're telling me about you and your wife and having that wonderful cappuccino, that the things that you learned when you were living in Italy and being able to bring it back. And you even told people like one of your favorite places, the Amalfi Coast. So head over to Sorrento and check it out. Um, being able to learn from your parents sitting at the table, listening by osmosis, understanding some of the, the different process and operational efficiencies that you started learning and then watching them like house hack before it was even cool, that construction. And you realized like, hey, listen, you you went and got multiple degrees and you kept coming back to this thing around construction and then being able to take that, help it with a global perspective, being able to serve your country at the same time. And at the, and, and, and at the same time, you had a really uh, a pretty, um, what's the right word? clear realization that when you put 25 grand in the stock market and 10 years later, it was still worth 25 grand. Like, hang on a second. All the stuff that I was learning at home, I could probably put it into even more practice. You and your wife, you got started, you had your 10 assets that you knew were going to be paying you over time. And then you realized that there were even other ways that you could participate by passively selecting the right team, having them do the heavy lifting and you also being able to participate, which keeps you in the game even longer. And that's one of the things I know that you're doing even today with Capitano Investing group. And the entire Going Long family is like, yeah, yeah, Billy, just ask him the question, man. So let me ask you on behalf of the entire Going Long family, what is the best way for the Going Long family to find out more about you, what you're doing, Marshall, and also to more about what you're doing at uh, Capitano Investing Group? 
Yeah, they can certainly you can certainly find me on capitanoinvestinggroup.com where you can download a uh, my a free resource basically where I outline my five top investment criteria. But also you can link in with me uh, as well. I like I like LinkedIn. I like love uh, linking in with new people. All right, fantastic. So check him out, everybody at capitanoinvestinggroup.com. And when you reach out to him. When you reach out to him on LinkedIn, please let uh, Marshall know that you've already invested time uh, listening, learning more about what he's doing, his life experience, and also how he is helping people today. Uh, that's going to make the conversation much easier for the two of you. So Marshall, on behalf of the entire Go Along family, I just want to say thank you very much for deciding to invest your time with me uh, and the entire Go Along family today. Thank you. Well, Billy, thanks for having me today. It's been a pleasure. All right. Fantastic. If you give me like 10 seconds, I'll wrap things up and we'll get you out of here. So go along, family. Just listen. He shared a worldview with you. He shared about the operational efficiencies. He's talked to you about the way that real assets and specifically real estate can help you to have more control of your life, gain that significance that he was talking about in the book, Halftime. So take today's conversation, share it with family and friends, have the conversation. And while you're doing that, I'll be here preparing for the next conversation. So until then, go out and make it a great day. And thank you very much. Trust that you enjoyed today's conversation. And once again, today's conversation was sponsored by First Generation Capital Partners. If you're an accredited investor and want to find out more about how we're helping accredited investors to gain their personal freedom even faster, go to firstgencp.com forward slash going long.